If you look up in the night sky before bed tonight, what will you see? The Milky Way? A few major constellations? Or maybe just a few scattered stars? Or maybe nothing but a hazy glow? It's estimated each year the brightness of our night sky increases by nearly 10%. And the brighter the sky, the fewer amount of visible stars. If our light output continues at this rate, stargazing will become a thing of the past or only available in extremely remote areas. But stargazing is perhaps the smallest casualty of light pollution. New studies support it causing depression and certain types of cancer in humans, and is disrupting a whole lot more, including serious threats to the survival of some animals, plants, and insects. Light pollution, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, wildlife behavior. If they were aware of some of the statistics, they really might be shocked. In addition to exploring outdoor topics like this, Green Belly makes big meal bars packed with 650 calories in protein, fat, fiber, and carbs for big outdoor adventures. Green Belly meals have been called Rice Krispie Treats on steroids and come in five flavors using all natural ingredients. The green Belly meals, and these are these really delicious uh, bars. Green Belly. Green Belly. Green Belly meals. Green Belly. If you have an outdoor adventure coming up, check us out at greenbelly.com. So what is light pollution exactly? There is not a single definition. One that many researchers and activists would agree on is that it has to do with any sort of adverse effect resulting from the use of all of this artificial light. This is John Barentine a physical scientist and a big name in the light pollution space. Is John Barentine. He is with the International Dark Sky Association. How bad has light pollution become? Well, for starters, two thirds of Americans can no longer see the Milky Way at night, which should be visible everywhere if weather permits. In most urban areas globally, the Milky Way is already a distant memory. Because so many of us are accustomed to starless skies, many are not even aware of the issue. Satellite measurements from roughly 2010 to 2015 show that the amount of light observed was increasing by about 2% each year. That is almost certainly an underestimate because the main source of data that we have from that time, a satellite operated by NASA, it really couldn't see blue light at all. More on blue light in a minute. A study published by Barentine suggests it is even worse. A 10% increase in the bright brightness of the night sky per year from 2011 to 2022. The data in this study was gathered based on reports on star visibility to the naked eye. Another statistic from the study reported that during a person's childhood, from birth until age 18, the visible stars in the night sky decreased by about half. In short, we're losing the night sky. Light has been an integral part of our evolution, with reports of humans using fire for over a million years. The advent of gas lighting systems in the late 1700s and early 1800s marked the first time in human civilization used light to artificially illuminate homes and public spaces, revolutionizing urban life and extending productive hours beyond the prior limitations of natural daylight. Cities like London and Paris saw their streets glow from gas lamps. The advent of electricity and then Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb in 1879 and the opening of the world's first commercial power station in 1882 marked the most transformative leap in light. Over the following decades, the world lit up. We turn on and never turn back off. If we look at photographs of the Earth taken from space, electric light is really proliferated. It's being illuminated around the world, and now it outlines all of the continents, gives you a sense of where people are in the world, which is almost everywhere. A lumen measures the total amount of visible light emitted by a source, indicating its brightness. This concept is related to the candela, which measures light intensity in a specific direction. One candela equals the light emitted by a standard candle. A typical household light bulb might emit 800 lumens while a car headlight might emit around 2,000 lumens. In clear conditions, one lumen can be seen for a few miles. An urban city like Los Angeles emits billions of lumens. It can be seen for hundreds of miles, even from space. We have a tendency to over-illuminate, to use higher levels of light than are really called for in these different applications. To me, the worst kind of outdoor light in many respects would be one that has no shielding, so it broadcasts its light in every direction. Several types of light sources, incandescent, fluorescent, LED, and blue light, all contribute to different types of light pollution, including glare, clutter, light trespass, or light spilling into unwanted areas, over-illumination, or unnecessary amount of light, and uplight, or light directed upwards. 
all of these contribute to sky glow. Sky glow is that hazy glow over cities that blocks out the night sky. People may get the idea that, well, light pollution is only a problem for astronomers. And if you don't care about whether you can see the night sky, there's really nothing to be worried about. And that's absolutely not true. Light and electricity are obviously beneficial, but we are paying a huge price that seemingly no one knows about. Before electricity, the sun largely determined our biological clock, meaning when we would go to bed and rise in the morning. This is called circadian rhythm, and almost all living organisms have one. Circadian rhythms regulate various physiological processes, including hormone production, body temperature, sleep-wake cycles, and metabolic functions. Before electricity, we averaged 12 hours of light exposure in a day. Now we average between 16 and 18 hours of light a day. And even during those so-called off hours, lights are not completely off. This light is referred to as Allen, or artificial light at night. Things like electronics and screens inside our home, and also things outside our home like street lights and car lights. This study from the National Institute of Health took a sample of over 10,000 adolescents between 13 and 18 and compared their sleep habits with their behavior. The study found in areas with higher amounts of outdoor Allen, the kids were getting less sleep and there was a higher prevalence of mood and anxiety disorders. One main reason for this is that light exposure suppresses the production of the hormone melatonin. It's not necessarily the thing that may, makes us sleepy or puts us to sleep, but it does tell other systems in the body what to do at certain times. And we know if that timing is off relative to the natural rhythm of the day, that it can have a harmful effect on those body systems. A study published by Environmental Health Perspectives (EHP) investigated the correlation between artificial light at night and the prevalence of certain diseases. They determined individuals exposed to higher amounts of outdoor Allen had up to a 47% greater risk of breast cancer and up to 105% greater risk of prostate cancer. Allen has also been linked to metabolic disorders like diabetes and obesity. We see a really strong signal that in places where there's more light at night in the satellite maps, there are more of these different disorders cardiovascular diseases, metabolic disorders like diabetes and obesity cancers. Light pollution appears to be even worse for wildlife. Unlike humans, wildlife can't go inside and shut the blinds. Human activities that involve lighting up the outdoor environment are impacting many species' ability to survive. If they're not suffering from the same internal health effects that we suffer from, there are a lot of concerns about their ability to orient and navigate at night. For example, sea turtle hatchlings are naturally attracted to the open horizon, which is usually the brightest direction due to the reflection of moonlight and starlight. Artificial light at night disorients them. According to the Sea Turtle Conservancy, about half of the nests at the Gulf Island National Seashore experience a high level of hatchling disorientation, which is often fatal. This disorientation causes them to wander aimlessly, making them easy prey for predators. Those insects like moths and beetles flying around our porch at night are attracted to the spotlight due to a behavior known as phototaxis. Similarly, they orient their navigation at night with the moon. High-powered artificial light overwhelms their instincts and disrupts their pollination patterns, which poses serious ecological concerns. We rely on those insects to perform ecosystem services, or if the main service is pollinating our food crops. Related nocturnal insect species like fireflies, which rely on light cues for mating, are experiencing population declines due to light pollution as well. And migratory birds who use constellations to navigate are also being disoriented by artificial lights. This can lead to death, especially in nocturnal species like owls. Birds can be confused and exhausted, flying in circles around brightly lit areas. Even plants, instead of a circadian rhythm, we talked about plants having a photo period where they need darkness at night, exposing plants to continuous light 24 hours a day, in many cases is harmful to them. The list goes on and on. It seems like insects around the world are dying at an alarming rate. So what do we do? Do we need to shut down the power plants from sundown to sunup across the globe? Some cities are already working on combating light pollution, like Flagstaff, Arizona now known as the first international dark sky city. Flagstaff has put into place light regulations that include a maximum number of lumens per acre, shielded light fixtures, and even limited different classes of light. Through these measures, they are saving money on electricity, 
and wasting less light. You can stand in the middle of their city center at night, and as long as you're not right underneath a street light, you can see the Milky Way, which is pretty remarkable. Some US cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, and Phoenix are all making efforts to swap out their street lights to control light intensity, the shape, the type of light, and its direction. Utah has certified 14 international dark sky parks in communities like Bryce Canyon and Torrey, Utah. I think the motivator has to do with astronomy. We have had an outdoor lighting ordinance in Tucson that is crafted in a way that is intended to protect the observatories, which uh, as of the last estimate have a local economic impact here of more than half a billion dollars a year. As our cities get brighter, the hidden cost of light pollution becomes more apparent. The childlike joy we get from seeing the stars at night and the humbling experience we get from looking up at the eternity of space is disappearing. And our sleep cycles, our health, and our wildlife are suffering. By being more intentional with our lighting, reducing unnecessary light, using better fixtures, and embracing darkness where we can, we can take significant steps like Flagstaff has done to address the issue. We know what solutions work. We know that they're cost effective. We will be doing a service in return to these species that do a lot for us. We are a small team that loves the outdoors. If you like this, we'd love if you gave us a like and subscribe. A big thanks to John for his help researching this video. 